Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Woodwork and Wisdom. My name's Colin Way, and today we're talking birds. We're um, we're going to make a couple of, again, it's a fairly new project for me, so we're going to make a couple of little um, oyster catchers. I've been playing with these um, this morning, actually, just looking at different orientations, so we're going to have a look at those in a second. Nice, simple beginner turning, nice basic shapes, just how I like it. A um, little bit of skew work, bowl gouge work, spindle gouge work, all those sorts of things. Ben on questions and all the camera trickery. So you know what happens. Just uh, put your questions in the chat. He'll then relay them to me, and hopefully I'll do my best to answer them if I can. Um, so, yeah. So I think this is probably going to be quite popular with a few of our regular viewers, um, um, and it's something that I've I've sort of seen, been inspired by, uh, really from carvers. And I was looking at um, a, a video, actually, of uh, of – uh, people carving um, duck decoys, and it's sort of that's what led me onto it. Just searching on the internet, I saw these sorts of shapes. I mean, these are really quite good because I started off with this sort of thing here, and you would have seen this on the holding image um, that we've done for for today's video. So it's just a little little oyster catcher, very straight legs, very basic shapes, that sort of thing. Looking down, looking for all the the um, uh, the crustaceans and stuff in the in the in the sand and in the silt so that was one and that actually that was one that i made from um if you remember a few weeks ago we done some driftwood projects and this was done with some of that timber so it's quite a nice um use of that now, i've been playing around this morning i've done a couple of things here so this one to start with i'm um, probably not the best camera to go on because we're getting quite small now so let's just go to another where should we go ben should we go number two Perfect. So that one, a little bit of a flat on the bottom. So I've just flattened the bottom. So it could just sit there on a shelf, do whatever you wanted it to. But then I thought, well, let's have a look at the legs. And I went online again, just have a look at, at uh, how legs bend on on uh, on these types of birds. Um, and they bend backwards. So it's different than ours, than the, the knee uh, faces backwards. So we sort of have a look at doing that. I've only done one. I'm going to do a second one for this one. So this could either be a sitting bird, it could be a stood bird, and then um, just into a little bit of bark um, seated like that. So it's just playing around with shapes and forms and that sort of stuff. I want to show you how to do the leg. It's just a simple bend. Um, so, yeah, let's have a play around. And, and like I say, ask questions along the way. Um, didn't matter with the timber, little pretty bits of bark like this really work. And I've literally just grabbed that off the shelf. I haven't brushed out. I've done nothing with that one. So it was just experimenting and playing around. And that sometimes that's how um, these best forms come, really. Um, we get inspired by things we see, but then you sort of try and or start making it your own. So I've cut. I've got some quite nice timber here. I've got some nice pieces of spot with beach. So that's quite a pretty bit of timber. Look, we've got some uh, quite a lot of spalting going on on that. There's quite a lot of soft stuff in there as well. So I do need to be careful where I place things. On this bit, the white is very soft. So that would be the thickest area. And we'll tape down to the tail um, on this a little, a little bit more, a little bit stronger. Uh, <clears throat> and then again, um, a slightly smaller piece of the same material, so the same bit of beach. Not quite as much spot spotting in this, but that's going to be the head. Let me give you some measurements because I know a lot of people. Um, like to know roughly what we're working with to start with. So on this particular piece, I was starting off with a, a blank that's well, about five inches long, so 12 and a half centimeters, and then we're about 45 to 50 um, square, so just under the two inches. Um, so that's that blank, that's the body. This one's about 33 to 35, so inch and a quarter-ish, and then length three and a half inches, about 90 mil. Nine centimeters. That's all the measurements, all the different types of measurements that I could give you there. Centimeters, millimeters, inches. Um, let's get started. So we're going to go friction drives. Of course we are because we don't need big um, clumbersome drive centers. Let's go small. It's only small pieces of timber that we're using. So we don't need to go big and chunky. So we're using ring centers. So um, ring center, friction drive, ring center, tail stock center. I'll do the body first. We have added added in another camera uh, today, so we should have four angles. So we've got a little down the line that should g give you the the height of the height of our handles. I know that's always an important part. So remember what I said about that. The markings in here. Let's go 
that softer area right at the top. So that's going to be thick area here, thin area here. The reason I've done that, if you think about it, um, if this is really, really thin, okay, if I had the thin area this side, all that, that torque is going through that section and there is potential that it could sort of twist or break. So I'm going to have it to all the tailstock and keep the strong area um, where most of the drive force comes from. So there we are between those two centers. Let's go with a slightly bigger tail, uh, tool rest. Check to make sure all the corners miss. Lay speed to zero, turn the lathe on. Uh, I'm going to use a roughing gouge to start with, but I need to counteract the pressure from a roughing gouge by going a little bit quicker in speed. So if I go up to about 2,000 rows on this one, I'm going to rough it down to a near cylinder. Just on that last cut, then I just slowed up and just moved nice and gently just to give me the best possible finish before I attack it with a skew, of course. So we're going to go straight on with a skew, bevel rubbing, lift the handle. Come around this side, do the same. Let's have a look at the, the grain that we've got running through there because I know it's going to be pretty. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Proper nice stuff. So let's get the, the head end done. Sorry, not the head end. This is the body, of course. The top of the body. The tail's down this section here. Um, I'm going to start with a, start with a spindle gouge. Probably improve that finish a little bit. So that's good. All right, let's just rough and gouge down a bulk of that waste before we go back to the skew to clean up. Just taking out, you know, a, a big chunk of the waste there. I'm going to raise the torus up just a fraction. A bit too high. Let's drop them a bit, just a wee bit. go down as far as I dare that's absolutely fine for the minute so we're sand this now so dust extraction on and I'm going to start around about 150 work our way up to 400 there's enough strength at the moment um, and we're going to little we're going to make a little jam chuck just to tidy up those ends as well to make our lives a bit easier so nice and gentle with your your sanding you don't want to snap things because you're pressing too hard this is quite thin down this end, of course. So 
That was um, that was actually a 100. So now we're going to 150. Finishing up on a 400. There we go, that'll do us. Now, we'll turn the extraction, extraction off just, just for a little bit, but what I wanna do now is just take as much of this waste away as possible. So I don't have to mess around too much um, on the jam chuck. Now I can part. Okay, so there we are so far. Lovely bit of timber. We've got to clean up this end. We've got to clean up this end as well. So we'll do that on the jam truck. But whilst we've got everything between centers, let's make the head as well. Um, that was with a slightly smaller piece. Just bring that tail stock up. And we're just going to do a little brattle, brattle point either end I like this 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 is the sort of turning i enjoy that uh, time of year is coming where i can start making the little nativity scenes again and that's very much a, a sort of the very basic shapes in turning um you're just sort of suggesting of a sh you're suggesting the shape um, or what it should be um, which is quite nice, a nice way of working, very simple. We've got no questions yet, Ben. So we've got no questions yet, but um, there's a couple of um, things people pointed out. Cliff was saying that the bird's knee, what we think is its knee, is actually its ankle. And then... Um, long ankles. <laughs> no, long <laughs> feet. <laughs> yeah. um, and then we had something about a, um, a spalted sandpiper, which I thought was nice. That's very nice. I like yeah. that. I like the sound of that. I love it. Um, I mean, there's so many things. If you go online and, and look at turn... Would turn birds. There's so many different variations. Either um, I know we've discussed penguins before, but there's robins. Um, there's seated or or birds swimming. Um, there's all sorts of things you can do. And really, again, it's just up to you to run with your imagination. It's just another nice thing. Another project to your arsenal. Oh, I've just gone with a bowl gouge there to do that. Didn't worry about the rough and gouge. Let's go with a slightly smaller skew now, though. Just do the same thing, just clean this area up. Don't want to make this too pointed. This is the beak, so it's going to have a nice little round over. There we go. Sand that up again. So 
a couple of simple forms, pretty similar to each other as well. It's a little teardrop in both, just slightly different sizes. So that was uh, up to the 150, so a little 240 and a 400. There we are, done. So we're going to part that one off as well. And then we're just going to clean up the the top and tail with a little jam chuck. I think uh, it's quite important. Trying to do them with just sanding is not going to um, give you a, a clean enough finish on this project, you know. So let's just take out as much waste as I can first. Oh, oh. There you go. So again, you've got that simple form. Yes, Ben, you've got a question. Yeah, we've got a couple of questions in. First one from Jim. He's um, He says he's planning to buff and Carnuba wax um, a project. Um, should he start with a sanding sealer or straight onto the raw wood? Um, sanding sealer, always. Yeah, sanding sealer. So put your sanding sealer on, wait for it to set, lightly de-nib, um, and then you can start um, putting on the, 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 um, the wax. And then uh, Matthew's asking that for the best wood finishing project uh, product, but I guess there's lots that you could choose from depending on what you're doing. Yeah, the, I mean, the in terms of what finish you use, that depends on what the project is. So the best finish, do, do you mean, do you mean a high gloss finish? Do you mean most resilient, resistant? Do you mean waterproof? Do you mean water resistant? Do you mean colorful? You know, so many different things. Um, if you're talking, I would say, so if, we, if let's say uh, we're doing fruit bowls, I would always go finishing oil. If we're doing sanded bowls, I'd always go food safe oil. Um, and they and it's the technique that you use to apply them. So you'd sand it in and you raise the grain and then you put it back like wet sanding and put another layer on. Um, if I want a high gloss waxed finish, I go for a um, high gloss wax. So one of the Hampshire machines, for instance, if I just want a standard wax finish, I go for um, a, a neutral or a clear uh, regular paste wax. Um, if I want a really high gloss, relatively hard finish, then I'd go for a, um, a, a lacquer, a spray on lacquer, because you get no brush marks at all, no no um, no polishing lines. If I want um, a, a softer, shiny surface, I'd buff. So uh, things like Tripoli or Buff Compound and then Carnauba wax over the top. So there's so many different types depending on what the project is. They all require some, something slightly different. Um, unfortunately for us, there is just no one stop um, for a finish. Um, depends on what you're making. And then um, Ruby was just asking about the size of the head again. Oh, the head. Hi, Ruby, by the way. Um, size of the head before I started. So... I can give you the dimensions before I started were 90. So three and a half inches, Ruby. And then in terms of the width, inch and a quarter. Um, now my finished size is going to be three by 30 by, yeah, inch, well, just under the inch and a quarter. So yeah, inch and three sixteenths ish. All right. So let's tidy both of those up. I've made earlier on, I made a little jam chuck for these. Um, it might need adjusting because I'm not sure whether the size is the same as the first one that I'd done. Um, and I don't want to thump things into this either. I want to put them in gently because I'm not going to be able to get them out that easy if I start thumping things in. So nice gentle cuts, extractions off and out of the way just in case. 
Let these be to zero. Turn the lathe on. And we'll use a little spindle gouge for this. Gentle, gentle cut. And the best word of advice, if it comes out of the chuck, don't panic. Which is easier said than done. Yeah, and the reason I'm doing this, I want this really to be clean. This is certainly for the head, which is the section I'm doing here. You know, you're gonna that's gonna be quite visible. So then sand. And then we're going to flip him round. If you can't get it out from the front, just take the chuck out the lathe and just push it out from the back. Let's have a look and see how we get on a minute. There we go. That comes out nice and easy. Do the same this side. I'm not going to do any turning here, though. We're just going to sand because it's pretty much where I want it to be. I just need to tidy that end up. got our the top or the head what we'll do now is just flip that over do the same thing but we're just going to swap it over to the other side yes ben question um yeah so a question from mark Paul. he's asking um well he's been reading of um sodium silicate based finishes for food items uh, one product is liquid glass uh, another product from japan is approved for food juice is there anything you know about colwyn uh, uh not a thing when i i've never even heard of the term i mean in in this country if i'm i'm talking the uk now where i am at the moment um i if it's a food safe product then i tend just to go with a food safe oil that's the only thing i really know of um so no I, i'm i'm i was obviously interested but um it's not something i've seen or heard of no mm. so there's obviously things like tongue oil and um, and all the, you know, the citricals and things like that. Tongue oil is a nut, so do we, we, you know, we need to be careful with allergies and stuff like that. But there are the, the, the natural oils as well as food safe oil, which is a mineral oil in effect. Um, so it'd be worth sort of doing some research on that. It's quite interesting. Yeah. Mm. Um, and Emma's asking about um, what, what, uh, what was the headstock, I think, of the um, material that you're using there. That's spotted beach isn't it yeah sorry it's the, the main timber spotted beach um in terms of the jam chuck we're using some lime and jam chucks like to be um soft without too much um regular grain what i mean by that is like a piece of ash doesn't work because it splits too easily same with chestnut um but things like beach things like lime sycamore maple those things they work quite well as jam chucks they don't split readily i'm putting a little bit of outward pressure on that you see so we don't want it to um, be too weak um, and Emma would also like to know, what was the base? Is it a burr or a piece of bark? So, no, this, well, yes. Uh, yes and no. Uh, this one here was a piece of um, oak burr. So the sapwood on this is, is rotten away a long, long time ago. It, it could do with a brush out to get rid of all the soft stuff. And then this piece over here that I had the other uh, bird on, this was just a piece of um, uh, ash. I wish that with a bit of the bark on and I think they're nice little stands. I've literally just cut that off a bit, but um, with a little bit of work standing up and brushing out, I think that would make a nice sand for these little figures. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, the gentleman would turn and Mark's asking about um, Harrogate. Any plans for Colwyn, Jason, Steph or Ben going to Harrogate? Well, there's no plan for Colwyn going to Harrogate, no. um, but uh, uh, I don't know. Ben, are you, you off to Harrogate? Um, I've not heard yet, so oh. we're waiting to find out. You're waiting to find out, yeah. okay. <laughs> waiting to cut it, fine, okay. okay. Um, yeah. No, I, I know, Mark, I did say before that there's, uh, we were thinking about it. A couple of things have come up, which I will talk to you about um, separately, but I won't be able to make it. No, I'm I'm a bit busy now. Um, but, yeah, I'll let you know. 
Um, so no, have a great time at Harrogate. If anybody has never been to Harrogate and they're and you're in the UK, I'll get fired or shot. But it's one of the best, if not the best, woodworking show that um, that we attend. I, it's fantastic. You know, it's just like a um, a big reunion when you get up there. But no, loads of great stuff. So do go if you can. And then Alien Leaders asking, um, they're curious about how you could make a cardinal since they have a spike of feathers on top of their head. <laughs> well, that's down to your imagination. Um, I'm not going to suggest that. I need to have, have a look at that and research that. But there is nothing you can't do with a bit of imagination. You'll you'll be able to do it, even um, even if it's multi pieces. Um, you'll get to it. So yeah. But if you do make something like that, then um, yeah. Take a picture and give us a shout. Oh, sorry. The, a question from Emma a minute ago. She meant, um, to what centre was it that you were going you were using in the headstock? Oh, what centre? It was a ring centre. So it's a dead, what we call a dead centre. Let's have a good close up on that one. So it's a dead centre um, with a little ring on the end, and they drive through friction only. So it's a solid piece of metal, no bearing or anything like that in it, and it drives through um, through friction. It's what we also refer to as a safety centre because if you get a catch or a dig in. Um, the timber stops, but the center can keep going because there's no prongs on it. A really nice center to use. I tend to use that if we get the school school children up. Um, I put that center in because school kids don't really have a fear factor, so they just shove chisels in. And what it does for them, obviously it keeps them safe, but it also gives them a little bit of discipline as to how hard they can push before a piece of timber stops moving. So it just gives, develops a, a delicate touch. Um, on the lathe, which is quite handy, really. So just a little bit of sanding on there. There we are. So we're going to remove this. Now that's in quite tight, so I'm going to see... Yeah, it's coming out nice. Turn it around. I think that one's dead, Ben. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's on again. That's about right. Before we need it, it's moving quite wildly. But remember, all I'm doing on this is just sanding that end, rounding it over. that should be enough yeah that's really nice that that um that spalting running all the way down to the tip of the tail there look very good break him out the mold so there now how easy was that let me just present that pop the overhead one then there thanks ben but look you can really well you can orientate that spalting to to whatever you want now you've got an option here you could use um thin dow drill a couple of holes and just pop them together. Well, the one that I've done over here, I've just made a couple of flats and, and used epoxy resin um, and literally butt jointed that together, look, okay? So it literally just two sanded flats on the disc sander as normal um, and then glued together. So those are your options, really. I mean, if you use the dowel, and I'd probably go for something like four mil dowel, so really quite small, then um, you'll have a very thin join area, um, almost like the two balls are resting on top of each other instead of the flat area. So that's entirely up to you. So that, I don't think, I think you'll agree that that form there is fairly simple, okay? Two shapes exactly the same, they're just differing in size, okay? I just wanted to give you a little bit of a, a show on how I've done these legs. So this is, this is quite fun, and it's the same way that um, a lot of my figures, the German figures, how I bend the arms, and it's just cut on a 45. But um, yeah, just flaring out a little bit as well. So we've got the, the wide area in the in the centre of the leg there, as opposed to down the bottom. But let's uh, let's have a quick look at that. And I'm not using anything um, uh, anything bar a little bit of dowel. In fact, the dowel that I've got here is a piece of softwood dowel. So it's not even the beach. So use whatever you've got to my you've got to hand. You don't have to use dowel. You can just use timber that you've 
you've cut to size. It, this particular piece here is starting off at eight mil. So that size there. So it, it looks like ramen, the timber, or rubber wood, or something like that. Fairly standard stuff. No grain as such there. It's quite easy to turn. Quite a soft material, but uh, not tricky. Um, for a good reason. And all we're going to do is turn one bit at a time, just taper it. Yourself a decent bit of length there. Nice set of um, pin jaws. Tiny skew, nice fast lathe, about 2,000. Drop that to rest a bit high there. You can sand if you want, shall we sand? I'll just touch it. Touch it with a little bit of medium 240 grit. Then we're gonna cut it off. 45-ish. Oh. Okay, so there's one section, we'll do the next. And you can either do exactly the same again, or now you've got that cut there, work that cut. So taper down the other direction. Us. A little bit of abrasive, maybe. Part it off with the skew or just cut it off, whichever you fancy. Now we're going to add, just change the chuck over, add my sanding disc. So just want to flatten those areas away. Lay speed to zero. So we've got a couple of questions in here, Colwyn. Yeah, go for it, man. Would you like to go for it? Yeah. Okay, so... Um, Give me a chance to have a cup of coffee. <laughs> so Aaron's asking, have you made birds um, using different types of wood with different colour and grain? Um, oh, the red cardinals come back. I, uh, they, they live in an area where they have red cedar to make something like a red cardinal. Okay. So um, I guess um, just asking if you've made any other kind of birds with different colors and stuff. No, I, honestly, I haven't. Um, because, well, we had a go at the penguins a few months ago. And I know Jason's done some done some birds um, as well. I'm looking at a few now, and he's, I know he's done the owls. I haven't. I did take a liking to the Cardinals. I was at, um, well, year before last over in Aramont, up, uh, so at Gatlinburg, up in uh, Tennessee, and I, uh, the first time I ever saw in the flesh the Cardinals flying around, and I really did take a liking to them uh, at that point. I get what you mean by the crest as well. No, um, but in my research for all of these things, because very often I'm just trying to bring different projects, so bring projects to life that I would have seen on um, on the internet, for instance. Um, in your research, you start seeing lots of different variations of this type of turning. So it is quite inspiring. So I haven't had a go yet, but I do intend to. Certainly the one that I've made this morning, I'm really quite keen on that form 
that shape. And I think with a little bit of perseverance and playing around, you can start to develop a lot of other different forms as well. I quite like it, yeah. Um, and then Maria's asking, um, when you attach the head to the body, do you sand a flat on both to get a better join or do you use a dowel or glue alone? Um, so either or, um, you can uh, mix them up, so flat and dowel if you want to, um, or you can just use the dowel or you can just use the flats, the butt joint together. Um, on this fella here, um, I don't know how close we can get into this one, Ben. So I, it, I even went one stage further on this one. I made a little cove on the um, body side, and that has the ball to fit inside. So just uh, that extra bit of security again as well. So really, whatever you want to do on that one. Um, that was that. The one that I made this morning is just two flats, but jointed together um, to, to give me that. So, yeah. Um. And then a question, uh, well, Ward saying, fancy looking skew there. What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the Colwyn Way skew. I was going to say, for those people that are new to the channel, I haven't uh, seen, it's the Colwyn Way signature skew. Thanks, Ward. <laughs> Um, Martin's asking, well, Martin's been given some freshly felled cherry branches and intends to use them for pepper grinders. Um, should, he, should he turn them as they, sorry, should he turn them as a solid blank and then leave to dry? So if you are, if they're limbs that you're keeping the pith in and turning them into um, your pepper grinders, you would need to turn them wet. Um, I And I'm only suggesting this. I think if you drill them out now, so don't turn them even, just drill them out, the blanks out. Maybe maybe just turn them to a cylinder. That's it, nothing else. Drill the middle out and leave to dry. You might get away with it not shrinking and cracking. If you didn't, if you left them, uh, left those limbs whole, they will crack radiating from the center pith. So be just be aware of that. If you're if they're big enough to cut either side of that center point, then do that now. Rough turn them out. Do the same thing. Let them dry. Um, I would be a little bit a little bit careful. They cherry especially does like to dry quite aggressively, and so does develop cracks unless you're really careful. So yeah, I would do that. Rough turn right. Get the hole down from the middle. Dry it very, very slowly and, um, and hope for the best. You're not going to get, you know, keep every single one, but you'll, you should retain most of them. Yes. And then just a nice little idea from Maria. She's saying perhaps if you dip the beak in a boiling water or hot water, and then you could potentially bend it just a little bit yeah, to do like a like curlew that. or yeah. um, a, a wimbrel. <laughs> there we are i see i knew maria would run with this <laughs> right up your street maria i think um super cool let me just sand a little flat here so just on that one now with i'm going to try not to glue myself together here let's um use a block of wood Put a little bit of the super glue down on there. I'm going to spritz the end with accelerator on one piece, super glue on that piece, and hopefully they bind together. Oh. Or alternatively, if they're not going to bind together, this is where I need several pairs of hands. It's, it, I do like to sand these afterwards, so don't worry. You can see a little bit of glue on the surface. It doesn't matter. We're going to sand it fairly aggressively. Oh, you, fairly aggressively in a minute. Epoxy resin, if this doesn't work, I'm going to stick myself to it. Epoxy resin, I can, I can glue that quite well now. Look. Um, epoxy resin, if you have a little bit more time, I wouldn't really have time for this to dry, but this is going off quite nicely. I'm going to take half of my skin with it. There we 
go. I think I can sound that now. So all I'm going to do, look, we're just sanding this knuckle in. Ankle, sorry. Get the body part right. Just blend it all in. A little bit of work on there, then let's mount it on our board. I'm going to bring up a little platform, Ben, just to stand this on, I think. measured anything with any of this drilling so I'm hoping it all fits nicely. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how precisely this is going to fit. Oh he's a bit he's a bit skew but I could need to drill another hole for him to fit nicely, but you get the idea. Let me turn them around too, yeah. Those little legs facing backwards. Sorry, Ben, was that not in the right area? There we go. Let's put him up right there. There we are, our little bird. I don't know what he's going to be called, that type of bird, um, but uh, we've got the ankles. Yeah, the ankles right there, I think. Use your imagination, really, with those. That was the mornings playing around, practicing. I've got three birds finished, well, almost finished now. You could just use, um, uh, put a little flat on the bottom, having sat straight down on the top like that. That works really nicely also. Go to number two there, Ben. There we are, that sort of thing going on, just to sit on the shelf. Really nice little pleasing things to make. Hopefully, that just sort of spurs a bit of the imagination. It's, it's that's what we're trying to do with each other. It just gives gives us give each other um, some new ideas with these videos. So um, uh, keep your suggestions coming in as well. Um, we we hopefully we can keep coming in with new stuff every single week. Any more questions before we go, Ben? No, uh, no more questions. There's lots of talk about different types of birds and stuff that people could make. It's, um, yeah, it's gone going. It's no, good. no suggestions of peacocks or anything like that. Uh, well, penguins did come in. Penguins the... came into it, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Look. Thanks ever so much, everybody. If you like what you see, don't forget what I always say. Give us a thumbs up, share us around, and subscribe to the channel. Um, until next time, and I can't remember what I'm making next week. I think it's something mushroom-based. But uh, yeah, until next time, thanks again for watching and see you again. Bye-bye.